We've looked at loading a log on the sawmill and how to set the mill, so the rest is simple, right? Think again. There's a lot to think about when sawing a log, and Logan will walk us through the process as we plane saw a log. So uh, I noticed you did use the tractor to get your log up on, on the mill. So with this being a manual mill and not having any hydraulics, yeah, you there's ramps that you can use, which mm -hmm. I like I say, I grew up using those for the most part, but then if you have a tractor, um, so that always comes in handy having a tractor. First you get the mill, then you buy the tractor. Mm -hmm, yeah, All right. Exactly. So uh, now that we have the log on our bed, we want to position it um, mm -hmm. so we, we get the best cuts of lumber, right? Correct. Yeah. And so let's... Show me how that works. That. Yeah. So when we're rolling the log up here and we're getting it set positioned on the mill, mm -hmm. we have kind of infinite amount of opening faces or that very first cut. But yeah. once we make that first cut, then our options are kind of sealed. Um, so what we want to do is notice where any defects or cracks are or knots. Mm -hmm. um, and if we can lump those into one big face, we want to do that. Otherwise, it's always a good idea to put knots on the corners. Um, so as we look at this log here, we can notice there's a big d knot right there, yep. and then there's a knot right here. Okay. And so the way those are positioned, it's going to be hard. Obviously, we can't put them on one perfect face, yep. but the way it's kind of sitting with that kind of in a corner here and this one almost in a corner here, uh, we might be able to get those both on the corner of that side and then this corner. So they're, corner they're on the edges of the board because those will probably come off anyway when you're edging or that kind of thing. Exactly. Okay. And then the other thing with them being on the corner is you'll be able to eat some of the knot on coming down on this face and then if we do what's called sawing around the heart we'll be able to eat some of it coming down this way okay um, so yeah perfect way to say it is just we'll be able to edge and take that material out um, and keep it out of the center of our boards all right so uh, what do we need to do to get the log in place for for milling there's two kind of theories that we can do mm -hmm. um, we can do what's called plain sawing or live through and through sawing where we just leave the log flat and just go all the way down. Okay. Um, and this log is a pretty good quality log. We might do that depending on how many defects we get, but it's always a good idea to turn the log anytime the grade of that board mm -hmm. that you're sawing will be worse than the one on the previous faces. So if we think we can get better wood from this side or this side or the bottom side, then from the face that we're sawing, we should do that instead. Okay. And we can talk through that more as we get into cutting it. But right now where it's at, we're gonna lower these stops in the back just a little bit. Okay. That way we'll be able to continue to saw lower into the log and then we're gonna clamp it in place. Sounds good. I like to put them at like that 45-ish. Sure. Um, and it just gives you space because anytime you have to readjust it, um, it's better to just get it clamped as low as possible. What we can do is take a cant hook, mm -hmm kind of tuck it underneath the log, just like that, and then you slide it in. So then with these clamps, you just slide that in. Sure. And then you don't want to over clamp it, because gravity's gonna hold it there. And if you over clamp it, sometimes you're gonna twist and you'll be fighting your other end. So just get that side secure. Mm -hmm. Again, a couple, and then we'll do this side. So what I was checking for here is just making sure we're going to clear this. Mm -hmm. I took that one down so we wouldn't have it, but it's kind of a pain to not have it. So in all reality, the best way to set this up would have been another like foot and a half that way. We should probably move it down then a little bit. What we're after. And this is where it's really odd not to be able to stand in there because I normally would just go right there. There we go. So you can get right underneath it like that. Is it almost to that back one? There we go. That's exactly what you want. So now that we have our log in place, we just want to do one last check to make sure we aren't going to be cutting through any metal. Yeah, definitely. So we're just going to come down here and you can kind of just look down the blade. Things you want to notice are this box on the rail here. Make mm -hmm. sure that's going to clear and that the log's not shooting out over that. Um, and then all those side supports are below, for sure, the center of the log um, mm -hmm. and anywhere that blade's going to be, basically. So 
uh, keeping an eye on the height of those and then as well as this clamp here we can kind of see the handle is shooting up just better to move that down that way it won't be high but one thing you don't check is the one thing you hit so right. always remember that um how does how does this all work mm -hmm. so to control the height that the saw blade is going to be at mm -hmm. we have this wheel and a scale this scale is in inches and it tells us how far up from the bed that that saw height is at okay and then this wheel each uh, notch is a sixteenth of an inch and so if we go one full turn down, that's gonna be a two inch revolution. And so what this will do is this will give us a stop point at which uh, height. So if we wanna drop it an inch and an eighth, mm -hmm. uh, we'll just go down to where that arrow was pointing and we know that that's an inch and an eighth from where our last cut was. Okay. So that's kind of the metrics we use to gauge that saw height mm -hmm. and control it. And then it looks like you've got a power feed on this one too. Correct, yeah. So this is an electric motor that runs a drive system through this rope. Um, okay. And we can control the speed with um, this adjustable variable speed, minus slower, plus faster. And mm -hmm. then this is our direction. So up for forward, down for backwards. It always comes back full speed, mm -hmm. um, but you can't control how fast it goes forward. So always be cognizant of that from a safety feature. All right. As we're coming down on this opening face, we're going to shoot for about a six inch wide opening. Okay. And for a little less than that, that's all right. Uh, but we don't want to be any more because we're going to be wasting wood there and we could have got another board off the top. So we would probably were maybe a touch deep, but that's a really good cut. You also notice how that knot that we positioned is just on the outside of that board on that other end. We'll go down and take a look at it. So notice how that knot that we were positioning earlier is on this very outside edge of that board. And so we'll be able to edge that later on and take that defect out. That's great. So now we're going to go down and make a four quarter or one inch thick board. I think what we're gonna do is take one more board and then we're gonna turn this log 90 degrees. All right. Sound good?
So we just finished that last cut, and as we pointed out when we were making it, that we had some irregularities in the grain pattern, and those swirls indicated being close to a knot. Well, on the reverse side of that board, what did we find? You got three knots right there. Yeah, three knots, and then this other one from the corner. Mm -hmm. So at this point, to continue cutting on this face is not gonna yield very good lumber, and you'd be losing good lumber on this side of these knots and on the other reverse faces. Sure. So this is a good time to turn that log because this board um, still has one good face, mm -hmm. um, but to cut any more, you'd have two bad faces and that's not gonna cut it. So, All right. alrighty. Go ahead and get a good secure bite. Yep, that'll yeah. work. And then we're gonna take, first thing, we have to make sure our side supports on the back are up. We don't want those to be uh, and go ahead and keep your feet out from under there. I know it's hard, especially with these wide mills, yeah. but we definitely want to make sure that we don't uh, spin it and not have something in the back. So if you can just twist that one up a little bit. Perfect. That'll be good enough. Now we'll go and get a good bite on it. Because we'll have to put those down once we turn it. Yeah. So we're going to twist this clamp out. And then we're going to go ahead and spin the log making sure there's nothing keeping it from being square. Okay. Now, once we're there, oh, that's perfect. So now, now we'll be able to push this clamp in to hold that log at 90 degrees. Now we're just gonna knock these down a little bit um, to maybe like a 45 degree angle instead of straight up and down. Perfect. So now that we've turned the log 90 degrees, we can look down and make sure that this face we just cut is perfectly tight against those side support fingers. Mm -hmm. um, and we can also see you know, how level the log is. And we're gonna do the same, maybe not quite as deep a cut as we made on that last one, but this is gonna give us a square edge and maybe a couple good boards as we go down this cant and All turn right. this into a cant. Let's do it. All right. So in taking that board, we still have a lot of good material on it, and we can come back to this face, but we can't go back to these other faces if we take off of this one now. Sure. So we're kind of saving it for later. We know that that's still a better face than this side face is, but we want to still see what all those other jacket boards look like on the outside of the log. Let's get those back side supports up first. And then I'll turn it if you want to just take that clamp out and just sure. reverse spin it. Perfect. There we go. That's a good sound. Yeah. All righty. So now we know the log is secure. We can put these fingers down almost all the way to about half. Yeah, sorry about that. Yep, that'll be good. And then we'll clamp her. We got this nice tooth to grab. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's secure, it's not going anywhere. It's nice with that right angle. Yeah. She's locked and loaded.
Right now you're at about a six and a half, seven inch wide cant. Oh, sure, yeah. Thickness wise. Yeah. And so in order to make our top grade of lumber, we have to at least be six inches. So it's better to turn it now. You can still come back to this face, but see if we can't peel off a couple more boards before, like you said, you get into more of that defect that's below. Sure. So we're gonna turn it 90 one more time and okay. then we'll be set to roll. As we watch the log turn into wood, our next section will address how to remove the bark, or wane, from the pieces we've cut as we look at edging lumber.